Hey everybody, Steve Stedman here. Today I'm going to cover one of the new features in SQL 2012, the IIF statement. Some people use the term inline if or immediate if to describe the if statement. Uh, if you've used Microsoft Access, you might be familiar with this. The IIF statement is very similar, or IIF is very similar to the Microsoft Access version. It's also similar to the case statement, but easier to write, and it has only one condition. You can think of it almost as a shortcut or a, a shorthand version of the case statement in T-SQL. Basically what it does is it evaluates a Boolean expression, which is the first parameter passed in, and returns one of two results based on that Boolean. So if you take a look at the syntax at the bottom of the page, you can see the IIF statement. The first parameter is a Boolean expression, and if that Boolean expression is true, the second parameter will be returned. If it's false, the third will be returned. Some of the details around this. The performance is very similar between the IIF and the case statement, and in fact, based off some of the error messages that we'll see in a little bit, I think that the IIF is really just a shortcut or really maps to the case statement. It simplifies the code over using the case statement in some scenarios. Uh, it can be nested up to 10 levels. Now, if you're really doing 10 levels of nesting in the IIF statement, it might make more sense to do it as a case statement. Now, the true value and the false value can't both be null. What that's really saying is, what's the point? I mean, if independent of the Boolean expression, if they're both going to be null, why not just replace the whole thing with a null statement? Because if true is null and false is null, then it's always null. What's the point? Uh, on to some sample code to take a look at how this is going to work. So we're going to start off, we're going to create a brand new database called tSQL 2012. And then I'm going to create a table called revenue. And in here, I'm going to add department IDs, the amount of revenue in a year. Run that query. We've got 45 rows in the table. Take a quick look at what's in the table. That's what it looks like. Years 1998 for different departments all the way through 2012. Now on to the if statement. And in the sample code here, notice that it references the URL back to my blog, which has more information on this. Now let's start out with the goal of displaying an indicator to see if we're, if we're above or below average revenue. So first we need to figure out what the average revenue is. So to get started with then, we're going to be using the uh, revenue table that we just created and we're going to be looking at the average revenue over time and the average revenue is going to be partitioned by the department ID. What we're looking for is with a given department, what years were above average or what years were below average. So first let's take a look at this query. We're going to run that. And when we run it, you can see that uh, the revenue shown is for Department 1, and then down below it goes to Department 2. And then the revenue uh, being shown for that specific year, and then the average revenue column has been added, which shows the average revenue for that department over all years that we have here. Okay, so let's take a look how we might do this if we didn't have the IIF statement. Well, first, let's take the select statement we used just up above and put that into a subquery or drive table so that we can use it and uh, use the average revenue that's calculated here in our case statement. Uh, we're going to select all the values out of there and then we're going to look at the column revenue compared to the average revenue and we're going to say case when the revenue is greater then we're going to return the value better than average. Else we're going to return the value not better that column is going to be labeled ranking totally able to do this prior to SQL Server 2012. We run this and you can see that we've got a new column out here called ranking that contains two values. It's either better or not better, implying better or not better than average. Next, how would we do it using the inline if or the IIF? The way that we do it is we would do similar thing with this subquery uh, and then we'd say IIF revenue greater than average revenue. This is our true value. This is our false value, and you can see this one line here, compared to the four lines we had up above, a little bit easier to understand overall. So we'll go ahead and we'll run that query, and you can see we get the same results set up without having to type as much as we'd normally have to type with a case statement. So here we're going to say if 3 equals 2, which just happens to always evaluate to be false, then it's either going to return true or null. Now if we run that, it works. It returns null because the third parameter is what's returned when the value is false and 3 never equals 2. Okay, now let's take a look at another one. Select IIF 1 equals 7. Again, that's always false. And then the first parameter is null and the second parameter is null. When we run that, 
Oh, we get an er error message that says at least one of the result expressions in a case specification must be an expression other than the null constant. Well, we're not using the case statement, but SQL Server seems to think that we are. What I think is happening is that somehow through the query translation as it's being parsed, the IIF is simply being turned into a case statement. That's it for today. A little bit of background on me uh, here on this slide. For more information, you can follow me on Twitter, SQL EMT. You can take a look at Database Health Project, which is a project I've created that's freely available for working on SQL Server metrics and health monitoring. Uh, or you can visit my website, stevestedman.com, for more information. All right, have a great day, everyone. Thanks.